watching a child cry may be tough, but it's not a symptom of anything. What? <laughs> what the fuck does symptom mean then? We're, we're, like we're not diagnosing anything. I'm just literally. I mean, then the, like bleeding probably isn't a symptom of anything either. I wonder what his Google search was. Oh, insane! <sighs> I insane don't know. We're about to, we're about to, what does crying we're about to find mean? out? We we jumped into this like in in media race, as they say. Uh, um, we are talking about a. Uh, we actually talked about this a little bit before, but a a video that Mike reacted to, where there's a poor child uh, in the you know eight to ten year old range who is being forced to do an incredibly long wall sit, and let's say not enjoying it at all. The next uh, comment is like this: He said, uh, "Like you said, man, there's no context." That being said, the the kid could love it. Uh, does the kid look like he loves it? Well, no, bro. Kids love fucking like donuts and shit. I don't think they like that. <laughs> They like picking their nose, like they ain't like C- fucking wall sits. Crying's not a symptom of anything, but if you hand them a donut, they're not gonna cry. And then this other dude yeah. says, uh, when I was a kid, I chose it, but I wasn't forced. I'm like, no eight year old chooses anything. <laughs> like what the fuck world do we live Champion. in? Champion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's why you're on TikTok with no profile picture <sighs> arguing me. Cause your wall sit made brought you to the NBA. People are crazy. What a weird flex. I, I don't understand. We don't understand. We don't understand. This is really what it comes right down to. Yeah. Why people behave this way on social media. I would say, it's, and obviously it's the vi- the vocal minority, right? Because people that agree with me probably aren't commenting, and that's yeah. how social media works too. Yeah, but yeah. I would strongly say 70 to 80% of people disagree with me. So as Jim said, there's this kid doing wall sits. His coach, you can't tell if he's helping him up or if he's like pushing him against the wall, but he's in some kind of physical nature there and then the kid like stumbles off he's wincing in pain nearly crying and the coach says walk it off all right whatever um and and, like it's just so hard to give context because although people on the internet know me like you guys don't know my dad man my dad my knee hurt he punched me in the shoulder so i thought about my shoulder not my knee i was raised tough you know like i'm not i'm not a fucking i only got that one verbally i never got it it, yeah people were calling me a participation award guy i'm like you fuckers like i've been a competitive (laughs) athlete for 25 years like i hate that and there's such a difference between like i want to make this kid win i don't want to give him a participation award but this doesn't make him win so my comment was basically like hey let's look at these things a little bit more holistically there's other ways to teach this kid stuff and we have Joe here, Hyper Thrive, strength and conditioning coach for uh, all ages. Yeah. Uh, and I think you and I have a very similar path in that way where we mess around with powerlifting and running, which we're going to dig into too. Um, but then we work with, you know, eighth graders learning baseball to yeah. professional athletes trying to optimize their shit. <laughs> and there's just so many different things. If we're talking about the mental of the kid, if we're talking about team working and what coaching is, or if we're talking about pure X's and O's, strength and conditioning, None of these fit this video. Yeah. And I made that comment with another guy who he's like, Mike, I respect you as a coach. I followed you forever. But and he goes on this tough guy rant. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, dude, it'd be a lot better to probably learn some like running mechanics, a little bit of striking, how to track our knees. Maybe we could do some air squats. If you even if it besides this, this kid misbehave, let's punish him. Yeah. Let's do air squats so he learns how to track his knees. We could do some planks that may be even more functional than this. He learns how to brace at a young age. But we're not growing muscle at this age kids pre-puberty he, he's not breaking any bones so we're not you know like maybe you could break a bone but you're not tearing any ligaments and stuff so we're not because someone's like isometric strength man you know that's important i'm like yeah man i know that's important like we can't just throw any uh, strength conditioning phrase you know at me yeah as an argument tendon health yeah yeah you know you're like yeah kind of but like tell me the last time someone under age 15 ripped an acl yeah seriously it doesn't happen yeah well it's funny that they're like you don't know, you don't know what suffering is like, and yeah. you post like a six fifteen pause. Yeah, with my, with my <laughs> eyes squirting yeah. out onto the ground. <laughs> you, you know, I'm you bleeding. You don't know about hard work. Yeah, yeah. Because if you go to any other of my posts, I'm dying. I'm dying. Yeah. I'm killing myself in the gym. Yeah, crying is absolutely in the DSM five. This guy is <laughs> yeah, fucking, fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you and fuck you on the horse you rode in on. How and funny fuck is you, that? Fuck you with the horse you rode in on. What an idiot. But even Jesus if it, let's say it wasn't, like, what does symptom have to do with anything? Yeah. Your strength and conditioning coach. Well, are yeah. you a sociopath? Like right, and 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 why, what? And he's like, oh yeah, but but we're not trying to diagnose anything. No, reading a human, reading the room doesn't make me a doctor, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like reading your audience doesn't give you yeah. a PhD. Where are yeah. we going to the medical books? I'm just yeah. seeing you. 
<laughs> I mean, really. So, like, back to what you expressed. Yeah. Is like if we just want to influence a person to have a healthier life. Yeah. All, our only job. Yeah. As a coach, is to make sure they have fun when they come in. Yeah. Right. Because a kid doesn't give a shit about anything other than having fun. Right. Like that's. As, when you're a kid, you're like, oh, yeah, but all I want to do is just fuck around with my friends and yeah. Yeah. play some games. And if, if it's not that, I don't want to do it. Like, right. No kid's like, oh, man, not, this is going to pay off in six months during the season. You know, like, yeah. They don't give a shit. Well, and and there's so, so many creative ways to do strength and conditioning. Yeah. So we did something in basketball we call one dribble. So obviously in basketball, for those that don't know, you can dribble as many fucking times as you want. Uh, <laughs> and it's five on five. <laughs> we would play a game where you can only dribble once. Which made you pass the ball right. much more and pass the ball much further because yeah. you got to move the bar f- ball further, which inherently makes you run a lot more. And so the game's fucking back and forth all mm-hmm. day. So as a conditioning drill, mashed up as a fun game because yeah. it's just a fast break drill, mm-hmm. you're just yeeting the ball and you're running like crazy. Yeah. Well, this kid could probably find a leg workout somewhere similar to that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, actually, another really good guy to, to make things positive, someone DM'd me. He's a PE teacher. Mm. He's like, Mike, couldn't, couldn't agree with your sentiment more. And he sent me a picture of his class doing uh, potato sack races. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Golden. Yeah. He's like, dude, they look like they're having a good time, huh? I was like, bro, genius. Props to you. You're doing yeah. an awesome yeah. thing. Like coordination, a little bit of balance, a lot of exercise, a little bit of explosiveness, like yeah. baby plyos. Again, we're talking with kids under fifteen. Yeah. We don't gotta we don't have to go to the Russian manuscripts on strength and conditioning for a ten year old. If you want the best example I've seen of like really youth training, it's achieve performance on Instagram. It's this dude out of Boston, and he literally rents out a a basement of a church, like of a community center. Yeah. And he's been doing it for like 10 years. And he's got kids probably from like 4 to 10. And every day they come in, he sets up a new crazy obstacle course for them. And these kids Mm. are loving it. Yeah, sounds fun. (laughs) Jumping over shit, doing flips, cartwheels, dodging, you know, like ball. He's just like even just dodgeball, throwing whatever he can at these kids. And it truly is like you you're watching them do it, and you're like, wow, that's actually a lot of athletic performance that they're they're gaining from this. And that compared to having a kid sit at a wall doing a wall sit, he's not getting any more athletic. Right. And You're let's say let's not say making our, any benefits for that kid. So to, to help these guys argument, let's say we are trying to build a literal champion, right? Which is not the American way. Let's say we snagged them at four years old because this yeah. guy's gonna be a pro soccer player. It looks like this kid's a soccer player. A wall sit, an isometric with no load, no resistance, yeah, like, besides like quarter body weight, isn't the way I'm going. Yeah. So let me uh, let me pose this question. If you did have a kid, yeah, at, let's say you got him at five. Yeah. And you're in charge of his training till he's 18. Yeah. In like, let's say like three to five year gaps, what are you focusing on? Yeah, I mean, in the beginning, it's uh, kind of stuff you're talking about. It's probably more games and general movement, like proprioception, moving through space. And that could be a, like a lot of funny, silly games that kids already yeah. do. So you, you blow up a balloon and we're trying to keep that bitch off the ground. Yeah. Right? Because now he's got to move laterally. He's got to get some hand-eye coordination. He's got to act quickly. He's got to react to where I'm throwing the ball, right? So we're playing like a spike ball yeah. type deal with the yeah, balloon. Yeah. So we're doing stuff like that or hacky sack throws. Or same thing I was just with my nephew, the Barquan's kid this weekend. What do we do? He's got a little monkey. He carries it with him everywhere. Mm-hmm. He's starting basketball practice for fun or like a league. Mm-hmm. So me and him are playing catch with his monkey. Yeah. Because he's having the time of his life. It's his favorite monkey. He's on the couch. I'm trying to lead him in front of it, and he's diving to catch yeah. a monkey. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. We're playing fucking games. Yeah. Um, I do think once you reach maybe a little bit more mental maturity where they can concentrate on shit, 8 to 12, we could probably, like, lift weights. Maybe, maybe not, like... Real weights, but we could do like an air squat and see yeah. how their knees track. Start we, to get the movement patterns. We can do some lunges. We could do some sled work. A kid would love sled work oh, if yeah. you turned it into a game. Yeah. A relay race of some nature where you're carrying like a freaking five-pound sandbag back and forth and a thing with some friends. Yeah. Um, and then once we reach high school or maybe even eighth grade, depending on developmentally where the kid is, like I've been this same size since seventh grade. I was like five seven, a buck seventy in seventh grade. So my dad got me a strength and conditioning coach. I just started yeah. lifting weights. We were I was lifting weights with NFL players. Not doing the exact same shit, but similar. And at that point, yeah, we're doing some hip hinges and we're doing some squats and we're doing some kind of pressing vertically and horizontally. Um, and then we're just playing a lot of fucking sports. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's like to that same point, that kid that you took from like five to 10, just playing games 
his parent is never going to have to convince him to go to the gym for the yeah. rest of his athletic career because right. he knows he knows like training as like I go and I have fun with my friends at the gym. Yeah, like that kid is so locked in versus the kid who has been doing wall squats until he cries for yeah. the last three years. He's like, Mom, please don't make me go there. Well, furthermore, like uh, people are forgetting uh, Todd Marinovich, who oh. was totally programmed from a very young age to be like a top level athlete by his in- absolutely insane father. Yeah. And what happened to him? He flamed out. He yeah. became a drug addict. He sp- spent time in jail. It's like you want to take away somebody's sense of personhood, yeah. make it about you. Well, that's right? e- that's even if they're good enough. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like some guy, other guy came in. And like that, you know, people just don't understand like basic <laughs> statistics or like science or anything because they're like, well, I made my kid work out and he played football at, at Navy. Like, well, for every one kid that played football at Navy for doing a wall sit, I could probably find five million <laughs> that were taught to do these wall sits and didn't even make their varsity team. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like that, that. Like, how is that concept not? In someone's brain, like the N equals one thing, I hate to say it because it's like a corny comeback. It's a little bit of slap in the face, debate lord thing. Yeah. But it's just so true. Like, or all of them would say, well, I was raised that way and I'm so good. Bitch, you're arguing on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> Why aren't I watching you on Sunday? Where, where's your yeah. Cowboys helmet, motherfucker? It was you know? his knee. His knee blew up. Yeah. <laughs> his knee. You know? If it, if it wouldn't have been his knee, though. They all have something. But yeah. Like, So h- how does the logic, like to me, it's just pure logic. Yeah. At that point, like it's a net negative or a net positive. That wall sits not doing anything athletically. It's not doing anything mentally, yeah. and it's not doing anything like emotionally, right? right. I think those are the three aspects we're looking at. Or even pro athletes, Ramsey, our buddy's a really good uh, 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 example. Joe Ken's a, a legend in the game. Mm-hmm. I remember hanging out with Joe Ken the first time. He was NFL Strength and Conditioning Coach of the Year multiple times, and he's on a pretty good Panthers team. These are Cam Newton's first years. And he told me every Friday, he's like, dude, I let them train. Other days, we don't allow the pros to go, uh, or I don't allow them to wear sleeveless stuff in the gym. We're here to work. He said, Friday, sleeves are out. They choose the music, and they're doing shrugs and biceps. Yeah. I'm like, why is that? Is that going to make you a better quarterback or tackler? No. It's so they have some fucking fun. Yeah. They get revved up for Sunday. They're all training together, having a good time. And these are grown-ass adults getting paid millions to do these curls. Yeah. But you're still worried about their mental. Yeah. So you're going to tell me this kid is on it? Like, what are we talking about? I don't know if you saw Ram posted it, like, last week. They just got a new weight room at Kansas. He's mm-hmm. a Kansas basketball coach, basketball strength Yeah, yeah, coach. I responded to him. And uh, it was, like, he's got, uh, like, custom LED lights everywhere. Yeah, it he looks had, like a nightclub. Yeah, he has <laughs> he has the room dark red. They're yeah. just blasting music and yeah. doing bicep They're just curls, curls. squat rack. This is the best basketball. <laughs> this is the returning <laughs> champion NC2A basketball team. Yeah. yeah, they're just doing biceps. And I think I commented, I said to you, biceps are really really big for the jerseys yeah. we gotta look <laughs> yeah. good yeah absolutely it says tv muscles yeah you and you got a bunch of 20 year olds right that have been doctored their whole life to be and babied their whole life because they were the best player on the team yeah and now you're trying to get them all to work together <laughs> and have fun that sounds like a great method to do that yeah absolutely i i've always let athletes hit arms it's yeah, like why not for for any argument against like yeah we're getting our basic training in like we're we're crushing every Everything we need to crush from a fundamental standpoint, we're doing it. Yeah. And if the kid wants to hit some curls, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to let him hit some curls. 100%. Like, why not? I just don't see – we're just like so – the strength and conditioning industry is just so good at like – what is it? Majoring in the, yeah, minors, the minors. The minors. And like bro science shit. Like who cares? Yeah. There's just no – there's no negative that's going to happen from doing even – 10 sets of curls a week yeah there's no negative yeah and you'll get jacked and you'll feel good about yourself they're gonna feel fucking dope yeah <laughs> yeah they, do, they don't know their yeah. biceps aren't doing anything on the field yeah they I don't know they don't care they're gonna look dope and feel dope you remember that like first time in your life where you started to have a bicep vein you were like oh it was only this last year <laughs> 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 feels good doesn't it <laughs> i do remember the first time i got a pump uh I think it was probably like a chest day or something. You know, my coach would kind of split things up like bodybuilder hypertrophy stuff. And then all the rest of it would be um, like running drills and like plyos and stuff kind of every day. Yeah. So we do like a chest day and then we do a bunch of plyos and running and abs and like rotational stuff. And that was kind of sprinkled through the week. And then we would lift one muscle. And I remember driving home. I'd been training with them two or three years, but maybe I just didn't pay attention. But I got my license, 16 
and my shit was like shaking and I couldn't like turn the wheel because it was like the first <laughs> pump ever. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? I am so jacked. I can't drive now. Like, fuck. I remember the first time it was, I was a freshman in college and I had never taken pre-workout. Like I just didn't even yeah. know what it was. What are and you, like, 28? Yeah. Yeah. Cause like energy drinks weren't a thing when I was in high school. Yeah. They kind of came out when I was in college. No, nothing. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't remember yeah. anything like that. Um, and then, so my roommate had, I think, Mesomorph. Was that a big one? Mm. Yeah. It was like one of the early crazy <laughs> ass, like dimethylene. Whatever yeah, yeah, it yeah. Is. Make it feel real nice. And like, in, in my mind, I'm like, well, if, I, if I'm going to do it, I want to feel it. So my first time I take two like heaping scoops. You probably didn't drink coffee at the time. Oh, nothing. Yeah. Absolutely oh, nothing. Geez. And I remember, <laughs> <laughs> I remember going to the gym and starting my pump. And I just remember having my towel and just scratching my face for like 30 <laughs> seconds. And I was like, what is going on? Like my face feels like it's on fire. <laughs> and I went back to my roommate and I was like, I, that shit's fucking crazy. <laughs> like, I, I, like you should not be taking that. Do you remember Redline? Uh, yes. I don't think yeah, it's a yeah. thing anymore. I think Bang made it. I think it was the same company that Bang. I was trying really? to explain it to the young guys. Redline was crazy. I would be driving in the pure winter, no heater on. I'd be sweating. Yeah. I'd just be sweating. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. I would drink a half an hour before the gym, and I literally, this is obviously before I knew anything, but I was like, oh, I'm warm. I don't even need to warm up. I'm fucking sweating. It's I party. Actually, I had a buddy uh, whose older brother in high school, he was um, he was into, like, drifting. Like, he was one of the first, like, professional drifters sick. in the area. And so NOS sponsored him. Yeah. Right? And so they just had a bunch of NOS delivered to the What house. a fucking uh, branding move, right? Yeah. Nitrous oxide. Yeah. <laughs> made, yeah. to, made to like put us to sleep or make our cars go hella fast. And now you're going to put in a caffeinated beverage. Yeah. Straight from the Fast and the Furious. Yeah, now yeah. I'm stoked on it. And then so uh, he was slamming these things. He was like a senior in high school. We were <laughs> young. And he got heart arrhythmia no, because he was drinking so many of these things. He like ended up in the hospital. I totally, totally believe that. A red line is still a thing. It's made by VPX. And I think, it, oh, maybe VPX doesn't make bang. Maybe I'm way off. Yeah, I don't think they do. Red line was good, dude. It, it was like a syrup. It tastes yeah, like you're drinking like cough, like, syrup. Yeah, like cough syrup. It tasted disgusting, but it would light you the fuck up. <laughs> it probably <laughs> it was cough like syrup because there's some cough syrup that'll make you have arrhythmias too. You know, <laughs> yeah. Too yeah. many red lines, I could definitely see killing a man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we want to jump into conspiracies. You got any fresh conspiracies? Fresh, really? Fresh, hot off the presses. Let's hear it. There's a journalist that was covering uh, the Qatar World Games. Mm. Oh yeah, World he, Cup. yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. He's sort of the the primary principal soccer journalist in, in, from America. Especially now. But he started in all journalism. He, he kind of did one of the main articles that was ever on LeBron James. I think it was ESPN Mag or maybe Sports Center yeah. Mag uh, when LeBron was like a senior in high school. Switched his, his role to soccer mostly. Um, but he wore like a rainbow shirt to yeah. one of the first games. You heard about this? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Did you hear the continuing story? About his brother? No, that he died. Yeah. And then, so it's tied in. Ten days later or something? His his brother, he was wearing it because his brother. Oh, is gay? Is gay. Yeah. yeah I, I just know that like, he's an advocate in general, and he, he likes to um, like send messages through sports, which regardless yeah. of what I believe or not, I think that's cool. You know, I think it's cool when like cultures mix, and sports are part of America, and they're part of the world, and they're part of culture. So I think that's a cool take rather than just being Mr. X's and O's reporter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know his brother was gay. But then, yeah, I mean. Got bronchitis, I guess, and died. Uh, yeah, we're talking about Grant Wall, um, and it's I, it's not really known, but he was feeling <laughs> crappy for days. He went to the went to a, a hospital or yeah. a doctor or something, and they they didn't really help him. In no, any they way. killed him, and then he died. I don't know if he got any medication. I don't know. I mean, it's I, that's weird, right? Uh, yeah, it is weird. It's huh. it is super weird okay, that he's sort of the most most prominent American soccer journalist. And he died. Is that a coincidence? I don't know, but he was f like 42 or yeah. something. If, he if, was, if it is a total coincidence, that's a horrible coincidence. No, that's not a coincidence. Guitar. I don't believe in that. Really? No way, bro. He It was like a big it's old a bad thing. Look. I don't know if it was the cops look. or the government. Or, they yelled at his ass for the rainbow shirt. He like, was he, detained. Oh, really? and then yeah, but detained. They, but then they, uh, then they released him and apologized, so... Yeah, because they knew they were going to kill him. Because they had already maybe. hired the bounty hunter for 10 days later. <laughs> Man. That's crazy. That is wild. 
Now, if this if this was in if this was in Russia, I'm sorry for my for any Russian listeners we have. I would totally suspect that he was poisoned. Oh, really? With, with cu- Cutter, I feel the same with like maybe. homosexuality and stuff. Yeah, I mean, such an Islamic state. Like, but, yeah. I mean, but he wasn't gay. He's he's they don't care. He's straight, married. They, they don't he, care. Kids. No, they don't care. Whole nine yards. No, they're they're. I mean, they, he was just an ally. No, they they don't care. They don't know and they don't care. The, honestly, though, Qatar in general is wild to me. Like, have you even just seen how much? I mean, really, like propaganda they're putting out, like oh, through sure. commercials. And yeah. It there it's, but it is amazing to me that they have the amount of money to where like they're just totally rebranding a country. Yeah. That like that's crazy. I didn't, I didn't read deep into it, but um. They paid their way to even get the World Cup. Yeah, it was. Oh, have you not? It seen was a whole bribery scandal. Yeah. Have you not yeah, seen yeah. the documentary, the FIFA documentary? No, but I, I like. Oh, I know generally this story, but I'm sure it's that's a good one. Because three part for those series. like not huge soccer fans, and I'm a middle ground soccer fan. But whoever hosts the World Cup gets an automatic entry, right? Yeah. Like Cutter's not ever actually going to make the World Cup. Yeah, they just don't have the athletes. Um, and so obviously it's a big uh, press move. It's a big money move because you're going to get a bunch of people in. Mm-hmm. Although. Uh, I think stats often show um, countries that host a World Cup and Olympics end up crashing economically afterwards because they put so much money into mm-hmm. the um, events themselves, especially yeah. there, just because they had to build all the arenas. I think we're pretty set four years from now. They already said uh, SoFi, Levi, whatever's in Seattle. We already have like six stadiums that they can use, so mm, we yeah. don't have to like re-infrastructure our whole country to right. host the World Cup. So we'll yeah. probably be okay. We're just going to get a boost. But countries like that... I think they built like ten stadiums, mm-hmm. like every single country that gets the the, the World Cup, ha- there's bribery involved. Yeah. Every single one. Yeah, I'm sure Even there's us. something. Yeah, I'm sure there's something for sure. Um, it, it's just it's a corrupt system. I mean, yeah. yeah. How do you operate in a corrupt system? You become corrupt. There's no there's another way to do it. Yeah, yeah. FIFA in general is known for being corrupt. I mean, even the Copa de America, it was during the pandemic and it was supposed to be in Argentina. And I don't know if it was government said no or what, but it ends up in Brazil, and then they're playing in empty stadiums. It's all just kind of weird. Um, yeah. And I and I agree. I mean, probably the Olympic Committee probably has some. Any governing body with power and money is liable to have a little well and sketchiness. When you are multinational or international, there's no one governing body that can keep, hold you accountable because you're literally above yeah. the national government. Yeah, yeah so, you're your own side piece. You yeah. do whatever. Yeah, it is a little bit weird, especially with yeah FIFA in particular, because soccer is such an emotional, ideological sport yeah. for seventy percent of the world. You know, like it's so tied to these countries. Like people are crying left and right. You know, like Argentina's going crazy. You know, my mom's from Argentina, and mm-hmm. so like my cousins didn't go, but uh, I think we had family friends and stuff that were in in Qatar a month before the game started. Wow just fucking partying in the streets and shit you know like th- this is Crazy. their life yeah yeah they're sending my mom selfies all morning today like freaking out and shit like have yeah, you been watching the games oh fuck yeah dude. I, i've yeah. loved watching yeah. this year it's, it's been awesome. a girl world cup too yeah did you watch today uh i saw the highlights of today we're pretty nice argentina today. let's go dude i think we're gonna win it they they looked good today no today was really good but france looks really good fuck fuck them <laughs> <laughs> no one likes the french anyways dude i don't even think europe likes the french <laughs> right? Nobody likes the French. You think? Well, I, I think it's because the French don't like anybody. I think it so starts then, there. So yeah. then, fuck them. I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm probably <laughs> going next year, so I don't. I'll find out. I'll come back and to report. France. I went for the first report. time in October. It was cool. Yeah. I've heard. I've Same. heard they're kind of mean to Americans. Like, I'm sure that happens. You look French enough. You probably slipped through the cracks. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, for real. I could fit in everywhere, <laughs> anywhere in Europe. Uh, I'm sure that happens, but like. We didn't experience that. Yeah, at nothing all. stood out. I think the main thing is in Europe, you have to like if you're gonna go and communicate with someone on the street, start trying in their language. They're gonna immediately know you're of American, yeah. mm-hmm. and they're gonna say, "Don't butcher my language anymore." Yeah. And then they'll switch to English. Sure. But I think they hate if you assume that they're gonna speak to you in English. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think there's probably like unspoken rules just in life, right? And I I, I could see how. And I love America. I'm American, and I love a lot of us. But there's a lot of fucking dickheads. Yeah, that yeah. probably go over there with their big old chests out, and yeah, hey, give me a burger. You yeah, know? I'm like, all right, bitch, just yeah. you know, show a little respect. So Aren't American. you speaking English? Yeah, so like, American to assume we can go anywhere in the yeah. world and not have.
have yeah. to know any, yeah. <laughs> any of the yeah. language. Yeah, I get it. Uh, we, we took the same approach in Italy. It's the same thing where you try, you, you know, get a few words together, yeah. you know, and then and then you abandon it. Because if you tr- actually try to keep going, they'll respond to you faster than you can understand them. Oh, yeah. And then it's then everything's lost. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't speak a lick of French at all. Yeah. No one likes the French though. That's for sure a fact. <laughs> that's for sure a fact. I'm about to whoop that ass. Mbappe's dope, but that's he's about sick. It. Yeah, he's dope. I mean he's twenty four. He he can win the next World Cup. It is so like I when I was in Paris I got to go watch him yeah, play. I saw your story. And it is crazy. Even you saw Messi then too, right? Now he's hurt. Ugh. It sucks. He was hurt for that. But we're game. about to go watch him in San Jose. Yeah. He signed to Miami. I heard that. He must it's be not guaranteed. Paid. He must be getting paid like crazy. I, I think he got offered money. 200 mil, and then Ronaldo got offered 300 mil. I forgot who. Don't quote That's me. That's got to be some drug money coming out yeah. of Miami. How, who has that money? Yeah, my, yeah. why is it Miami, right? Yeah, I mean, who? Uh, the, in the paying? MLS? I mean, they will sell every ticket. Yeah, that's true. Right? But like I was going to say, so I went to see Mbappe. It's crazy. Even on that playing level, somebody that good stands out yeah. like insane. Yeah. And like wall sits didn't get him there. No, <laughs> wall sits got him there. <laughs> Messi didn't do it as wall sits. No, I mean, people are just, I just, I feel like the more I'm around athletes, the more you just look at people and you're like, you would, you could have done nothing your whole life and yeah. you would still be playing no. in the World Cup. 100%. Yeah, Messi probably never touched a weight in his life still. Oh, yeah, definitely not. And and, and he's probably, if he he's wins, if he wins Sunday, he will undoubtedly go down as the best soccer player of all time. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. The passes that he pulls off. No, he's, he's not insane, even. He's not though. even looking at people. That's what I tweeted. I was like, this dude moves like a basketball player. Yeah. And obviously I'm biased, but the point is that when you have the ball in your hand, you obviously control it better. Like you saw his assist today yeah. when he like basically goes baseline on a guy, spins yeah, yeah, twice. That like sick. that's insane. Yeah. It's insane. You're right. What's interesting about like maybe even soccer more than other sports, NBA you see it a little bit, but the best stand out like crazy. Yeah. Messi's getting like triple teamed and like he literally does have that ball on a string and it doesn't really happen. Like you you notice LeBron for sure, but that's more of a physical nature. Yeah. There's other guys that yeah, do it. If Kevin Durant is anywhere in the world, yeah. you're gonna notice him. Yeah. There's a good uh clip I saw. I think it's the Kelsey brothers, the NFL players. Yeah. Uh have a podcast now. And uh Travis is the younger one. I forgot the older brother's name, but the older oh, brother's kind of uh, leading this conversation and Travis uh, is obviously a freak athlete and I, um, a lot of tight ends which Travis Kelsey plays um, not a lot but two famous ones were college basketball players mm-hmm. uh, Jimmy Graham who was the best tight end in the league for a long time and uh, Gonzalez uh, both played college basketball and the other Kelsey said there's no single player in the NFL that could hang with NBA players he said, we know a couple NFL guys, or sorry, we know a couple NBA guys that could probably play in the NFL. Mm-hmm. He said, there's not a single one that could hang. And he's like, I know I'm a fat guy just pushing people around on the line, but uh, he's obviously joking to, yeah, you yeah. know, because he's practicing with running backs. He has to block for running backs. He's blocking, I mean, like, DNs are some of the freakiest guys in the world. He's like, if any of these guys were good enough, they would be in the NBA. And yeah. I, 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 I'm obviously biased because of basketball, but I wonder your thoughts. But it makes sense money-wise. And he even said, and Travis is like, oh, well, I would. And he's like, dude, it would be way better to be the eighth man at the end of the bench in the NBA, come in, get one rebound, get paid millions, yeah. and then to put your body through it, mm-hmm. yeah. get paid less. There's less hands in the pot. You're just going to make more money. No one cares because your, mas- your, your face mask is on, so no one knows what you look like. You're not popular. There's, like, no bennies. There's no money. The money's better in yeah. the NBA. There's no clout and fame. It's better in the NBA. Yeah. I've, I've always said that from a genetic and an athletic standpoint, basketball players are the most impressive. I, I, not just I'm from so an biased, athletic I can't standpoint. I not argue, Because, <laughs> like – you're you speaking could, Mike's language right now. Yeah. If, if we're purely trying to just like simple down what is athleticism, great. Like you can make an argument for any other sport, but you can't make the same argument with the size of their bodies. Like, and like the skill. The dudes are so big. To be able to move, I know a lot of dudes who are 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. 
and they're not athletic. No. It, it's, it's not majority. more difficult to move a body at that size. Like, it just is. Yeah. So the fact that they can move like they can move at the size that they are, I don't think people understand how impressive it is. And that's what this Travis Kelsey conversation started is because the older brother said he sat um, – sideline at a, at a basketball game for the first time he's like seeing that close up he's like i definitely get it now like oh, there's yeah. just no way and, and there probably yeah. is there's probably a good amount i mean alan iverson i know was a pretty good db um i think jason williams from the kings uh played quarterback I, yeah. he, he went to high school with randy moss and so i don't know if he was nfl good but he was good good yeah like the other factor too is that you have to do everything yeah and the nfl i i think you could argue that nfl players have um just as good athletes if you want to talk about like strength, speed, agility, yeah, if we're doing like combine testing, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, or even yeah, even like tag or dodgeball, mm-hmm. it yeah. might be equalish. But yeah, you put into the the precision and the actual skill within basketball. Now you have the skill because there's only like three dudes on NFL team with skill. Mm-hmm. You got the quarterback, maybe a wide receiver, but that motherfucker only got a catch. Yeah, it's just so different. Soccer, you can only have to catch. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but ba- ba- basketball, you got to catch, you got to pass, you got to dribble, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to set picks, you got to play defense. You got yeah. you got to pass while you're Joe Rogan. Obviously, he's like not a sports head at all. But he, I saw a quote of his once. And he's like basketball. He's all stoned, you know. Basketball amazes me. They're jumping through the air and throwing this ball through this little hoop. I'm like, dude, yeah. How your stoner ass says it? Yeah, shit's yeah. hard. Yeah, that shit's really hard. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's like there's like the like pure athleticism versus a pure skill standpoint. Like that's why you can see dudes in the MLB who have like a 20 inch vert and they're yeah. still playing in the MLB. It's because golf, the John Daly stuff. Exactly. Yeah, it's so skillful in nature that you can get away. If you if you are just highly skilled and coordinated, you can get away with it. In the NBA, it doesn't matter how skillful you are if you can't compete at an athletic level that at least exceeds that amount. And then nowadays, you can't even be the non-skilled guy either. Maybe in the eighties, nineties, you could be the athlete. You know, kind of the Dennis Rodmans are known that they can't shoot or do shit, but he's so freaky athlete and so hardworking that he can compete. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, there's no one in the NBA like that. Not a soul. I've always made that argument on the skill to athleticism spectrum. The the pinnacle is probably basketball and maybe number two soccer. But you could argue like the strength and stuff's not there. But then their endurance has turned way up. Right? They're just fucking slow trotting the entire game. Obviously, baseball, golf are deep on the skill side. Football is really deep on the athletic side as well as like track and field, right? Like the purity yeah, of those. It's just about what you want to prioritize. Because if you even – like I rarely factor in endurance into athleticism, but you're right. If if you prioritize endurance, and like a, a D lineman is not going to score well on your scorecard now, yeah. but a soccer player is going to score very highly. Right. That's why it's so difficult because it's just like every person has a different opinion on what athleticism truly means. Right, and know? it's based on what they think is cool. But shit, if you if you're factoring in like let's say power, you're factoring in skill, and you're factoring in endurance, like basketball is still. I'd, I'd like to factor in like IQ too, yeah. right? Like like an athletic IQ, whatever Tactics. you want to call it. Yeah, where like quarterbacks need it, right? And maybe some like safeties that are running the defense on football. But every other player, you have like three things that you maybe do. Well, right, right so like an old lineman's blocking that dude. He's blocking that dude, or he's blocking that dude. <laughs> what do you think about like gymnastics? Like th- Olympic level gymnasts, I would say, yeah, that's probably like it's such a different skill, but yeah, I would say high level athleticism and high level skill. Probably, I don't know, because I've never done that shit, and I'm gonna get flamed. But I would, yeah. <laughs> I would probably say like, <laughs> don't worry, anything you say, you're gonna yeah. I'm trying to protect <laughs> the kids. I can't even be good to kids anymore. Uh, yeah. I would say gymnasts would be maybe even low, low, <laughs> medium to low IQ. You're like, don't abuse kids. People yeah. are like, ah. Yeah, wrong. <laughs> Dude, if that ain't the internet. <laughs> but abusing kids tastes so good. Yeah. Yeah. If that ain't the internet. Uh, Motherfuckers on the Balenciaga. Like, I chose the abuse when I was young. <laughs> <Yeah>. Weirdos. <laughs> Which yeah. is such a revisionist view. <laughs> you know? Like, looking backwards. Uh, uh, and uh, that person at eight years old did not choose yeah. shit. Yeah, nothing. You didn't even drive yourself there. Yeah. Yeah, uh, gymnast is a good argument for skill and because the skills are so different. It's not hand eye, yeah. but it is hand eye, but it's not. I've always said uh, like a strength to body weight ratio. Yeah. I would put them at the top. even just strength. You could argue, dude. Yeah. The, well, they're doing some crazy, crazy shit, and all all shit. the best weightlifters and CrossFitters they all have a gymnast background, right? Yeah, Imagine if true. the best gymnast decided to powerlift instead; it'd probably be over. Yeah, I mean powerlifters, and that's the whole thing about these powerlifters and weightlifters <laughs> shit taking themselves seriously. Get the fuck out of here. Man. <laughs> 
<laughs> we brought it up before, but like Chubb, the running back for the Browns, yeah, in like runners, no belt, just like walks out and squats six seventy five, yeah, weighing two hundred and ten pounds, yeah. He probably squats Shh. once a month. He doesn't, doesn't know, know that he just broke like multiple records. Dude, yeah. total depth, different federations. Yeah, totally depth, like two depth, totally clean, and he's never like practiced squatting. He yeah, just squats. Yeah. Just strong. We're going to take a very quick break here, and then we're going to get into some, some uh, controversy immediately here. <laughs> More controversy. I do like it. That, that Balenciaga shit is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's everyone in my TikTok comments, probably. They're probably the designers yeah. of that thing. That is crazy. The wall sits in fucking they, high fashion. They walked that back so fast. It is, I, don't even, I don't even want to dig in. It's bad. I don't even know what we're talking about. Yeah, it's bad. Balenciaga? Bad. It's not. It's not ringing a bell by that name. So what oh, is it? What's the What's the context? Is it, we got another dive in, dude. I, yeah, you, I open, you open the. Fucking I don't know box. It all that well now either. But they have people are pissed at Balenciaga. So Balenciaga so, is like a top three high fashion or even streetwear. You would call it Kanye. Yeah. Kanye uh, uh, was a creative dec- director for them, but or creative input. Uh, Dema is the actual creative director there, which is one of Kanye's best friends. He backpedaled. That's what's crazy, right? He's like, mm-hmm. dude, I can't believe my producers did this. I'm like, bro, there's yeah. no way this was on our desk. Basically, on one of their launches, they just had um, um, a campaign that came out that had a bunch of kids, um, younger than my Wall Street kid, right? These kids yeah, had to be toddlers. like four for, yeah, or something. Um, and they're in some weird kind of BDSM stuff. Oh, or oh, they're like holding yeah, right. teddy bears. Yeah, that yeah, are in yeah, yeah, yeah. That brings brings a bell. And that's all like, all right, getting really fucking weird. But then it gets even weirder, where I think the basically like anti pedophile uh, uh, bill. Mm. You know, it's like I forgot the name. It's like yeah. trust versus whatever. Mm-hmm. That's like hidden in the imagery. And you're like, all right, <laughs> now we're, you know, uh, hey, at least no swastikas this time, right? I don't know. Where, I'd probably take a swastika. Oh, oh, Kanye? That's oh, how Kanye got bounced yeah. off of Twitter. That was after. This is all after. Okay. Yeah. I, but, and honestly, no, you know. When are you guys going to have him on the podcast? <laughs> I probably he won't would. show up. Or if he shows up, <laughs> he'll be here for 10 minutes and he leaves. I'll probably That's would. what he does what, in Sacramento. What would be your tactics? Like in that scenario. Oh, you just probably let him go. I don't think you can interview Kanye. Yeah, I think Kanye like, talks to you. Yeah, that's true. You know, like I've seen a lot of his interviews. Um, and he just kind of rocks, man. Like, uh, this whole stuff came out, too, with Alex Jones. Uh, and Alex Jones That's is known for saying crazy, crazy shit. And then Alex Jones is pulling Kanye back. Yeah, he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And now you're like, fuck, bro, you know? Now you don't know what's uh, happening. Yeah, yeah, it's wild world, dude. So my yeah. question is this. Do we think that uh, the Liver King got jacked doing w- wall sits? I want to talk about the Liver King because this motherfucker is the one that showed him to me. Exactly. You're the, the first Liver is, King. This is Johnny, what I want to get right, down to. So Joe what? showed me Liver King when Liver King had like 30,000 followers. So how I heard about Liver King <laughs> is one of my professional athletes, Braden Bishop, is like- uh, Yeah, put him on blast. <laughs> <laughs> now, he, he's, he's just like obsessed with- taking the next step in athleticism in every way so like he's he's just goes on rabbit holes yeah. online you know and what's crazy is he was telling me like a year and a half two years ago he was like i started taking anc- ancestral supplements and he was like you know like i think that um supplementing with organs can help in these ways and he's like i've been emailing with the ceo of this company and he's been like recommending me stuff this dude had a back and forth with Brian before he was Liver King. Yeah. And so he reminded me of this last night, and I was like, that's fucking crazy. Yeah. You, like, you almost have to tip your hat at him. Like, the marketing scheme is Kanye level. I mean, yeah, it was it was very calculated. Yeah, and it worked. And, and with the clip internet stuff, which I'm starting to realize now that I'm even susceptible to, their acting skills are really good when it's clippable. Yeah, and really they, bad when you see interviews. Well, have you right? seen? Yeah, have you seen uh, like him teaching his son? Like basically, like this is the verbiage you use. This is how you like fluctuate Yikes. your voice. This is how you. And I literally, it, but now it's crazy. Like if you watch him, you can see everything he does from the way he speaks to yeah. his hand movements. It's all calculated, one hundred percent. And it's it's like fucking you know like any any leader who's done it. It's like they they make you see catchphrases and they mm-hmm. always like influctuate their voice in the same way yeah. so that it, 
It's like a commercial That's or what a I'm jingle. Bad at. Yeah, you got to get a jingle. We got to get you a jingle. <laughs> a jingle would probably be a good. catchphrase. Yeah, what's he say? Uh, hey, primals. Yeah, I need a, one but, of those. But then you watch him, and it's like it's literally like watching a WWE wrestling. Yeah, it's if the you same yeah. tactic, dude. That's my yeah. And we don't have to d- dive deeper into controversies and a bunch of weird people. But like Andrew Tate's another one that blew yeah. up around the same thing. And you see the clips, and you're like. Damn, these guys are just out of their brains, you know? Like, yeah. I saw Andrew Clip Tate's. I'm like, dude, this dude's living, you know, in the 40s. Like, what the fuck? And yeah. then you'd see Liver King. You're like, what the fuck is going on? But then I saw long-form content. Yeah, long-form. And I'm like, oh, they're 100% a character and 100% yeah. not even good at that character. Yeah. Because you could see him crack. Especially yeah. recently, I've seen Andrew Tate with this uh, Twitch streamer. And talk about characters. These Twitch streamers are more like us, I think, where they yeah. just turn their character up a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. but it's still them. Yeah. This kid Aiden's just a goofball, bro. He's balling rich now. He's 20 years old, and he's hanging out with Andrew Tate, right, the most famous dude on the planet. Mm-hmm. And he's just being himself, which is a goofy 20-year-old, and you can see him crack Andrew a little bit. Really? Yeah, because yeah, because Andrew was a, a legitimate fighter. Um, he was a world champion kickboxer, and, and this kid Aiden's like a little – NBA 2K playing mm-hmm. hip hop loving nerd. Yeah. And he's like gets his chest up in Andrew like he's about to fight him and you can see Andrew like actually laugh like mm-hmm. yeah. you know like just rips his character apart which I love but it 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 sucks let alone like deep fakes that are coming mm. you know with like AI copying voices and pictures. You know deep fakes? Is that just like That's like give a, me an example. So a deep fake would be that Someone could take all the data from this audio and video and hypothetically make an AI to make me say anything. Yeah, like we actually t- we actually talked yeah. to those people. Yeah. We actually had a, a meeting with the, yeah. the people that do the audio ones. Yeah, they yeah. could they could do what, my they, face, my words. It would be my voice, and I could say, "I want to marry Joe," or what? It, it literally say anything. The fucking <laughs> cra- it could say yeah. crazy shit. So let alone that, but just just being even clippable, let's take AI out of it. Just being clippable, it can make anyone be anyone. Yeah. And obviously I'm I'm can't be too hypocritical, right? Cuz the content in short form long form is what I do, but um it's wild to me that I got boofed, you know? I got fooled. In in one sense. Like I knew these guys weren't for real for real, but yeah. like I was like, "Oh, maybe these guys are just wackos and that's why they mm-hmm. were at the top," but both of them were highly calculated characters for sure yeah and it takes complicity on the base uh, from the basis of people who uh actually do long form content with those folks yeah Mm -hmm. i mean it takes complicity you have to actually like be deciding that there's something about continuing to hold this person's facade up on your show and you get you're getting more audience or getting whatever to have them on there yeah i I think yeah, half and half because like Bradley Martin, shout out to Brad, dude. Um, Brad called him out a little bit. Yeah, like Brad called Liver King out on his fake abs and shit, and was fucking yeah. with him and asked him about steroids in person. Yeah, and in person on a podcast. Um, <laughs> Ro- <laughs> Rogan blew Mark up for not yeah. going harder at the Liver King. Yeah, a bunch I of people. When same with a uh, carnivore, or whatever. Who's our boy, Saladino? Yeah, you know who's. I think is he part owner of Ancestral? Is that part of the deal? I don't know. I just know that they're connected. Yeah, I, I think it might they're... be business wise. I think there's a real relationship there and like a friendship. But like he came out with a sorry ass apology. Liver King's apology was sorry as fuck. He's reading a script the whole time. <laughs> that, and that shit was brutal to watch. When it just makes no sense either, right? Like he goes straight into mental health, which I've seen all yeah. his clips. He's never talked about mental health before. He's yeah. talked about us being low T bitch boys, but that's not. Yeah. He called me a low T bitch boy. And now all of a sudden he's worried about my mental health. <laughs> <laughs> Dude's bullied me for two years. <laughs> I, I'm, in a, I'm in a wall sitting. I'm crying. Yeah, because the liver can call me a low T bitch boy. Yeah, it's just, it's just kind of it's just all kind of weird. And, and maybe you know he is human. You know, I have a little empathy that he might just be fucked up and not know what route he's going to. But um, yeah. the amount of people he duped is pretty lame. But how many people did he really dupe? I think a lot, bro. Uh, I think I think more than not. Yeah, I think to like for me, it's like when you see that, you just know. Yeah, yeah, super obvious immediately. But I guess if you don't have <laughs> it, it's any like, context for it, it's like looking at the Matrix. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. like the and steroids. The code and yeah. I think the steroids were a dupe or whatever, and all dishonesty too. But just like his whole character selling you supplements, basically. You know, yeah, this yeah. whole thing was selling supplements. That's where like the real dupe is. Like, you're not trying to entertain us. You're not <laughs> actually trying to help us. Well, it's so funny. Like the comments immediately were like, "We forgive you, Liver King." Like, yeah. You've helped me so much. Some of them are dead serious. Like, you helped yourself. You started working out. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it wasn't a fucking liver. He didn't (laughs) drive you to the gym at 5 o'clock in the morning. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, and he didn't teach you anything about health and fitness. No. Yeah. I haven't learned shit from that dude. For real. 
He just it says he works out hard. That's why. Yeah, he's, he's literally. I bet you within five years he's on WWE. That's a great take. Yeah, uh, it's got to be less than that. Yeah, excuse me, because he's not young. I yeah, mean, I don't know what he is. Actually, he's got right. enough HGH. He's probably ten by now. <laughs> have you seen? Have you seen Jake Paul on yeah. Yeah, he's WWE? Good. He's made for it. Killing it. Yeah, he's made for it. I'm like, how long is have you been training uh, to I think, do it? I think he was a uh, not all American, but I think he was a high level wrestler, regular wrestler. But I mean, school. that's like. It's for sure different. But you know what I mean? I think he's a legitimate he's an athlete. athlete. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I thought about it too. The, our buddy Luke Hawks like trains um, wrestlers, and now he's an actor. But uh, I talked to him, and I was probably like 28, 29. I would love that. I was just too old, I think. And he even said, he's like, they're a little older, but you're pretty good, dude. I could probably get you a meeting or two. And I'm like, I just don't know if I want that life. But if he would have talked to me when I was early 20s, I think I would have been made for it. I can talk shit like crazy. Yeah. I'm athletic enough to look athletic. And we that's could all get you, have you to on do. like a semi-pro ring, bro. That's what he does. He runs his own league. It's pro, but his own league New through Orleans. the south. Yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. got to be wild in no. New Orleans. Oh, dude, but his he, story's wild. He like grew up homeless, and she has a crazy story. Yeah. And now he's killing it. What's the show? The the Young Rock. He's yeah. He's Stone the Cold. TV show. He was, the, he's in the, the Rock show. Rock. Yeah, and he's in a bunch of like. If I showed you his face, you might recognize him. Like he fights Wolverine in one of the movies. He's oh, like shit. he's in a bunch of movies. He fights The Rock in like Fast and Furious twenty. So, <laughs> was he, is he like a stunt man? Yeah, he started kind of yeah. being a stunt man or like a background double because he had such a wrestling knowledge. You got to get hurt doing that for sure. Potential, yeah, for it, for sure bumps and bruises, and then I think there's a high likelihood. Like I think some of those injuries are real. Like I think maybe even Stone Cold. Some people like broke their back for oh, sure. For sure, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, Stone Cold was fucked up. Yeah, a bunch of people got it. fucked up for real. Yeah, there's not really much you can do. Like even your if you're faking it, you're still dropping. You're from landing you're twenty jumping. feet. You're yeah. jumping onto another person. Yep. And, like, and if they slip or you slip, we're still, hit, you know, clenching. Yeah, there's yeah. there's gonna be fun. And then and then you're doing it nowadays. I think you only do it once or twice a week if you're the top dogs. But um, in the semi pro or on the amateur circuit, you're trying to minor leagues. Yeah, you're doing it four or five times a week. Trying you know? to get a contract. Yeah, you're doing shows anywhere you get a show. So yeah. your body's just yeah not recouping. Those dudes are juiced. I, they have gotten a little softer. Yeah, because because sure. the Chris Benoit stuff happened. I don't know if you know that story where he committed suicide, yeah, he killed I his family, that. and they blamed a lot of that on PEDs, which is probably s- true. But there's a, probably also CTE stuff oh, with wrestling sure. and otherwise, mm-hmm. and there's just chances, right? Like some people are just cuckoo. Yeah. Um, but they did like lock down on their PEDs, and you could tell people started to get less muscle. Like they're testing. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, supposedly they test the whole time, but. Um, no, I mean, so does the no. IFBB. I think no technically, shot, no. what the, the the that's the crazy part, right? Is that was the wait the, IFBB test? I think technically, if you go to their website, yeah. yeah there's a big speaking of the IFBB. There's a big article in the uh, Washington Post last week about uh, bodybuilders, men and women, dying because of uh, uh, the drugs that they're taking. The prescribed um, yeah. with air quotes by their coaches. Yeah. yeah. You know, oh, uh, man, take sure. take it take this this way this much. You know, like are they dying year like decades later? No, no. there was a twenty nine year old bikini girl that died this year. A lot or of it figure is figure maybe, but yeah, but like not like extra jack. Not, you know what I mean? Like a normal category. A lot of it's diuretics. Shit. If you're just an online coach, you're getting sued. Yeah, yeah, you would think. I mean, all of it. it it it, it is all just a recipe for disaster because now there's insane amounts of fame and a lot of money to make. And yeah. if these drugs are necessary to get you there, and not that anyone could take drugs and become a pro, but a lot of people could take drugs and become a pro. That's the other argument, right? Everyone's like, oh, you need the genetics too. Like, kind of. But, like, again, going back to even our NFL, NBA thing, if if <laughs> LeBron James yeah. wanted to be C-bum or a bodybuilder, he'd probably kick their asses too. The Olympia's coming up, right? Yeah, Thursday or Friday. Have you ever been? Yeah. yeah, every year for a fucking decade. I would like to go to that. No, that'd it's cool. Sick. You yeah. want to drive down? Where is it? Vegas. Yeah, it'd be fun. It's cool. I actually like C-Bum. No, he, C-Bum's cool. He's sick. Yes. I've been watching his videos <laughs> a little bit. He's, C-Bum's cool. He's jacked. Yeah. I mean, he is stupid jacked. Yeah. No, he's got he's got the physique to really make the sport popular. Because it's like, it's obviously not that achievable, but it's very aesthetic. Yeah. Where, where you know, very few people want to look like Ronnie Coleman. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that want to look like C-Bum. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. And it makes sense. Yeah, he's what six one, six two, two twenty on stage. Yeah, he's a beast. Yeah, he looks like a superhero. He literally does. Where like bodybuilding's just not popular anymore. 
I don't even know who's in the bodybuilding show. Our boy Brandon Curry. He, I don't know if he won last year, but he's run recently. But that's about it. So what's our, is there just a weight limit on classic? I don't think so. I think it's a look. And so if you're too question, big, I think if you're too big, it just you just won't win. I th- yeah, that's got to be more popular than like yeah. pure open yeah. bodybuilding now. And that's why even physique or, or whatever for guys was more popular than bodybuilding for a bit. The little yeah. board short deal, the Steve Cooks and stuff. Yeah, you look like Captain America. You don't look like more people want to look like Captain America than the Hulk. People think the Hulk's cool, but ain't nobody want to be the Hulk. Yeah, <laughs> everyone wants to be Captain America. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, true enough. Yeah, I think that's what happened. So another thing we want to talk to you about is that you you just ran a marathon, not yeah. to get here today, but just like period, ran a, a legitimate marathon and qualified for the Boston Marathon. I did. That is insane. Yeah, what's your time? We got a big old international thing here every year since I've been in Sacramento, since I was five years old. And I know pr- it shuts down most of Sacramento, but it ran literally by my childhood home. So like, yeah. it's so prominent in my memories because we would go to church extra early to be able to get away and be able to yeah. park home. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a big old deal and it's a qualifier for Boston. What's the time to qualify? And then what was your time? So the times are based on your age and your um, gender or sex, whatever it is. Um, and so for me, I think it's like age range from 18 to 30 is you have to go. Is that just like open kind of? That's kind of like the norm. Yeah. yeah. You have to go under three hours. Oh, fuck. So you have to be under a 652 pace, Ooh. I think, is like the the cutoff. Yeah. And um, was this a goal? Did you want to qualify for Boston? Or you just want to run a fast one. So all right. So I did my last powerlifting meet in uh, like May of 2021, and after it, I was like, eh, I just want to do something else. <laughs> like to be quite honest, yeah. I was just kind of, I just didn't want to do another powerlifting meet. But I like having shit on my calendar, like, or else I just don't train as hard as I will Mm -hmm. otherwise. So uh, I gave myself four months to train for the CIM last year. And I was like, I'm going to run a marathon. Let's just see if we can do it. So started running, just like pulled a program from online. And I ran that one in three hours and 54 minutes. And that was like, let's complete it. Yeah, doesn't matter what the time yeah. is, like, and you don't know if get I, through it. Yeah, I, I assume no like idea. a powerlifting meet, like you can't get a world total because you you don't know what it feels like, what it's gonna be. No, you kind of have to dip your toe in, however, and then refine. I was like, let's just not get injured. Yeah, yeah, let's and not die. So, uh, but I really like enjoyed the process of training for that and uh, of running it. So in January after that, I hired a coach. His name's Cole Watson. He's local. Ran at University of Oregon. Like ran the mile competitively at Oregon. And then now he does ultra trail marathons, so sure, like 100 yeah. milers and shit. So I hired him as a coach, um, and I train all year. And I my first meeting with him, I was like, I want to run the CIM again, and I want to run a 330. So that would have been like, I don't know, like a 7 730 pace, something like that. Which is still fucking moving. Yeah. If, if, for all those meatheads out there that have never ran miles. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's moving. And so I trained, I ran multiple races this year. I ran a 55K trail race, which is like 35 miles. I ran a couple half marathons. I ran another short trail race. uh, And then I just trained for this marathon. And like we're getting closer to the marathon. And like my, you know, in any given week, I was running four to five days a week. And it'd be like one long run and one tempo speed run where you're running at like race pace. Um, but for shorter mileages, like for shorter 10? mileages, yeah, ten would be like a, a good guess for that that run. And my my tempos were dropping. I was getting faster and faster. And you're like tracking your heart rate at the same time, so you're tracking where your like lactate threshold would be, like really where you could actually still be aerobic. Yeah. And we were getting to the point where like I was running at like a seven mile pace where I was still aerobic, so you could get away with it over longer periods of time. And then I would get a six fifty five and then a six fifty. How do those numbers affect your mental? Does it like rev you up? Like, oh, I know this number means I can go harder. Let's go harder. Because obviously there's a mental battle saying like yeah. this really hurts. Yeah. Like regardless of what this heart rate tells you, your fucking feet hurt, your low back hurt, your knees yeah. hurt, your lungs hurt. Yeah. And you're bored. Did, did it help you to see some of that? Because I could feel like, for me, some of that would rev me up. Like, oh, I'm barely working. Yeah. <laughs> like, I need to go. Yeah. It, I mean, it keeps you super honest. Like, because even my, like, actually where I, where I struggle with is um, I usually run those tempo runs too fast. 
Uh, mm. Just gas out. And yeah, and if if you're running above that red line where you're going into like where you're actually c- accumulating lactate, like you're not, you're just not doing what you should be doing within that run. Sure. Um, so we're we're getting to the point where it was close. Like I knew I could run a six fifty to six fifty five pace and still be aerobic. And so we're like chatting two weeks before the race, and I was like, I'm gonna go for it. Like I'm gonna try to go sub three, because what's awesome about um, CIM is that it's a Boston qualifier, so it's you know only certain marathons yeah, it's a big can deal. qualify you for the Boston, and they have pace groups. So it'll oh. be somebody who leads mm. out. If you're trying to get a three, a sub three marathon, stick with this guy. He's gonna pace you. Is he running it too, or he's just like an OG, or he's, he's hired by it. them? So the dude who was in my three hour pace group, so that's like the fastest pace group. Is you're you're with the three hour pace group, or you're with like the elites who are running yeah fucking Olympic level type crazy ass. Cause, yeah, cause crazy. We, cause like this is a big race. I know people like sometimes even fly in for it. Like it's a deal. Oh yeah. So uh, and this dude Adam Kimball, who is also an ultra marathon runner, he's just a he's lived a really crazy life. Like I'll show you his Instagram after he's like been on the prices, right? He was like <laughs> a college baseball player. He did one of those like reality TV shows where you have to be by yourself in the wilderness for 45 days. Like, oh yeah. He's just I just a, watched one of those. He's just done a bunch of crazy shit. Um, so he was my pace group and like, uh, basically I knew going into the day, I had the ability to run that pace, but everything would have to line up from like a nutrition it couldn't be raining on that day. Like, yeah. you couldn't have too slick of roads. Which like, often happens. Yeah, it had to be, like, everything had to work out for me to run a three. So I get, like, basically the goal, this is how I think you should run a marathon. There are, like, other thoughts. You, I, I think you should get as bored as you could possibly be for, like, 15 miles. Like, you're trying to keep your heart rate low. You're trying to not do anything outside of the range of what's comfortable. And that's going to start to suck from, like, 16 to 18. And that's when... You just have to be competitive and, like, not let people pass you. And then once you get to mile 20, it it fucking sucks. Like, that – because at, at a 650 pace, when you're feeling fresh, it's a very relaxed pace. But there's something called cardiac drift. Even if you're at a pace where you should be aerobic, your heart rate will gradually rise after an hour and a half. So, basically, for – the next hour and a half you're slowly building yeah. up lactate and your legs are getting heavy and your body just can't can't um like cycle that lac- lactate fast enough so it starts to accumulate um and so your legs get heavier and heavier so that pace that used to feel really easy yeah. for the last six miles is like it feels like you're sprinting because your legs just can't do anymore yeah so <laughs> I got to like mile 22 and I was like, all right, I just have to take it one mile at a time. Like if I can make it to 23, we'll see. How big is the and group with you? Is there like a group, like is a little patch still? Or So at mile 20, we probably had like 40 people with us. Okay. Ooh. By mile 22, it was me and three other people. Yikes. It just drops. Like yeah. that's just there's something about 20 miles where people just, you either make it or you break it. And then dude it's like every year without fail you see somebody shit their pants <laughs> you do you do was it you this I've year heard that. was not me i saw a girl shit her pants like mile 10 i was like yeah. just call it yeah call it a day and she's yeah. just running still um but then what do you do yeah so i'd like, be running to the bathroom I, there's no oh, other I'm place like, i'd be running i'm calling my friend and come pick me up like we, yeah. can, we can run again next year yeah. um so you wouldn't have shit yourself for this victory fuck no I, I think if I shit if myself I, in public, I think if I go 20 miles and I see, <laughs> I'm already in this, and I see 40 people dip out, and it's me and fucking Survivor in front of me leading the way, I'm yeah. shitting myself. <sighs> I think I'm Dude. in at that point. If I don't know where else your commitment levels are, bro, you're fucking in. Yeah, it's a, I to, I've trained a year for this. Yeah, <laughs> a little shit. But dude, all right, this is my thing. Is like. How much did you eat? There's a crowd at the finish. Good. And your friends and family Good. are there. Good. Let, <laughs> let, let them savor my victory with me. <laughs> well, and then so from like mile 22 to mile 26, it it's the physical part of it sucks. Re- it's horrible. But you see people start to pass out. Oh. You see people. It's cold. Especially this year has been cold. Full body cramps where they just lock and can't move. Yeah. You ever had one of those? 
No. So I, had I had close on a trail race. I had one out of a basketball game. Not to side tension. I open a pull into my parents' driveway. I'm probably senior in high school. Open the car, step out, and just fall like a fucking <laughs> piece yeah. of wood. And that shit hurts. No, it hurt terribly. It, it, everything. Like, like when It's like, imagine your quads and your hammy. It doesn't even have to be full body. Just yeah, quads locked. and hammy at the same time. Now what do you do? Yeah. Yeah, you're fucked. Yeah, and then so you're just trying to like put blinders on and not see these people because mm. it's like, well, fuck, I don't feel very good. Yeah. Like maybe that's going to happen to me soon. You got music going? No, I actually don't. I you have got never nothing. run with. You're music. chatting with Adam? A little bit. Really? Actually. Yeah, yeah. See? Well, this guy's like so fast and in shape. He's fucking hooting and hollering and chatting with everybody. That's cool, though. It's that's kind of good. A, he's a beast. Yeah, but that's probably good for the morale. Oh, great. Take your mind off some yeah. shit. Yeah, and then so I, I knew with probably like a quarter mile left that I was uh, like a minute. I had a minute of time to give up. So I'm coming around the corner and it did like that actually was the like one of the most release of like anxious energy and excitement I've had as far as like a sporting event. I just came around the corner and fucking screamed like I was just because <laughs> it's it's just so difficult and it's like r- running and racing is very different from the sports that I used to play where it's like if you have a bad game in baseball you just two days later have another game, right. but it's like you're for six months your only focus is in six months i have to perform on this day in this race and i kind of like that like i like feeling anxious pressure yeah so it was good but it was good to have like a a release of it at the end and actually i find some success so i ended up i ended with a 650 pace on the dot which is fucking crazy yeah it's holding ass i remember my first run when I decided to run a marathon, my first run was down our street from my apartment. Mm-hmm. I ran two and a half miles and I had to stop at that park <laughs> right next to temple. Like I, I was just Guessed. done. Yeah. What's that? Probably half a mile. Yeah. 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 And I was like, it That's was at me. like a, a nine thirty pace or something. So it is, it is crazy. It's opened my eyes again, just to how adaptable the body is. Like mm. whatever you, Whatever type of stress you put on the body, it's going to figure out yeah. how to adapt to it. What do you think you could run one mile in right now? That's a good, that's a really good question. Probably sub six. Yeah. I would be confident in running like a five, 520 to 530. I bet faster. So the dude who won this year's CIM ran like a 505 pace for 26 miles. That is so stupid. Someone, I mean, uh, you, you, all you fatty powerlifters listening, <laughs> just go walk a mile yeah. and move a little bit. Yeah, like pick them feet up and time yourself. Come back to me with your twelve minute mile. Uh, it's, hey, I mean, it's, fast, it's insane. Like, there's just it's there's so many levels to it. Because even like my coach ran it this year, and his goal was to run like um, five fifteen miles, and he got it up to like mile twenty, and he kind of had a hamstring twinge, so he he ran like six thirties the rest of the race. But I was talking to him beforehand, and he was like, yeah, like all – I'm shooting for, like, 515 paces. That's what gets you into um, Olympic qualifying. Like, you can you can race for the Olympics. And he's like, that's great. And, like, I can – I've qualified – he had qualified at that point for the Olympic twice, Olympic marathons. And he's like, but the difference between a 515 and a 5 flat yeah. is – incomprehensible well that's when like out working it's the same as anything else like genetics play a role yeah like some things you just can't beat yeah like that dude just got something i don't got whether it's genetics or not but like i can't get there regardless of perfect training perfect nutrition perfect mentals yeah and that's like even so a dude there was just an international marathon this weekend where a dude he was uh it was a debut marathon he's been a distance competitive runner for his entire life but he had never run a marathon competitively and so he like breaks out with the uh, ha- the pack, and he gets the half marathon, and then he's just like, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna send it." This dude ran like 4:45 paces for the last half marathon. Yeah, that's schmoving. That's a that's a full on sprint yeah, for 99 percent of the population. Yeah, no, I've I've best ever was college athlete. I ran sub six one mile, and that's with a coach pacing me on a bicycle. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm fucking sprinting. <laughs> that's like, sick. Like he's, my, got, <laughs> he's got tacos on, <laughs> bro, on a stick just just hanging so off the bicycle. Hard, bro. Yeah, that's that's well, a mile's not. It's a uh, mile's far. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not it's an schmoving. easy fucking race. Yeah, schmoving. so now I'm I'm signed up for Boston. Uh, so Boston, yes, but you. 
it's a year and a half because you can't yeah. qualify for the very next Boston. Yeah. It's 2024. Because you don't have time to train because it's like March or April. Right? Yeah. And like they already have everything, you know, yeah. like rostered up and set. But actually, so in April, I'm running, it's called the Canyons 100K. And it starts Ooh. in Auburn and runs up towards Tahoe. It's 62 oh, miles. What's the elevation change? Something stupid. It's like 16,000. Yeah. Oh. And you're on dirt type stuff? It's a trail deal? Yeah, it's all trail. So it's, we, like, Auburn has some of the best trails in the world. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's fucking incredible. And it's it's actually, Auburn is, like, one of the densest populations of, like, trail runners in the world. It's just, a, it's like a hub for it. Yeah. Uh, so, I, yeah, now the training's got to, like, now I'm going to, I'll probably just be, like, basically hiking for the next yeah. four months. Warming up. Yeah, I know there's some... I don't know if he went to the Olympics or one of the Olympics, but my high school basketball coach just made buddies with him, and he lives in, like, the Folsom, El Dorado area uh, because it's just, like, you know, we're runners kick it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's great. And I mean, obviously we have our bike trail, right? Yeah. That's, like, 40 so miles. Sick. Yeah, it's just perfect for people that want to move, bike, yeah. run. Yeah. We have a big uh, bike race that comes through here too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some comes through here to, like, San Francisco. The Amgen. Yeah, yeah, Amgen. Tour of California. Yeah. 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 What are you eating? Uh, uh, you're during? obviously burning it, bring it off immediately, but like, <laughs> so like during the race or both, like in life and then in training and then. You know what's crazy is like my nutrition is very similar to when I was powerlifting. Really, you know, it's like yeah, I'm I'm like an average day for me is like egg whites and eggs with English muffin for breakfast, and then I'll have like three meals that are the exact same, where it's uh, you know half cup of rice, like. You know, a, a, I don't even wait anymore. Yeah, like serving, something. serving a chicken, veggies, and then I'll do you know uh, either before a run or after a run, whether I'm like hungry or not. I'll just add in some carbs. So I'm going like English muffin and honey during the race. Uh, it's a company called Martin. It's just it's actually weird. It's like a, a gel, mm -hmm. but it's like a slime. Yeah, it, it's, those got popular. Uh even I feel like when I was in high school for some reason and Gatorade was like marketing them to everybody. Yeah. So like I tried them cause they're just kind of like, like Gatorade was the cool shit and they're just yeah. marketing everywhere. Yeah. It's just carbs. Yeah. yeah, yeah you're just yeah, taking sugar. carbs and electrolytes. But so in the long races like this, the ultra marathon, you, you, people call it like, they'll say it's a, an eating competition with running. <laughs> cause it's basically like whoever can keep calories down for the longest. If you like the real competitive sure. guys, uh -huh. That's like who wins. Yeah, it's, it's they whoever, sell more gas. Yeah, whoever can last the longest without getting their stomach to turn. Yeah. Um, so it's actually interesting. There's this race called UTMB Ultra Trail Mont Blanc, and it happens every year. It's like the it's the Boston Marathon of trail running. It's a hundred mile race around Mont Blanc. It's a sick course. It starts in France. You go through Italy, go through Switzerland, finish back in France. And uh, you'll see, like, the Americans, they'll have, like, fucking Top Ramen and Pringles. And, like, because their idea is, like, just get as many calories sure. in as you yeah. can, snack, something salty, whatever. And then you'll see, like, the French dude who won it was just eating, like, creamed rice with avocado. Like, eating super natural. And the American guys all bonked. Like, all fell out of it. And the European guys who are all eating super natural foods Interesting. are really, like... I think they have it figured out. Yeah. And it's like, man, the processed foods are not going to be the thing that keeps your stomach from yeah from turning and fucking up. So. Yeah. Yeah, you wonder. Because you hear about the same thing, like uh, DK Metcalf. Shout out our boy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we talked about that in the past. Huh? But yeah, he's just candy wearing candy all day and he looked crazy. That's a fucking liar. Obviously, <laughs> I, I don't know if they're liars, but they're obviously anomalies. Um, Did I tell I think I must have dropped this when we were talking about it. I had a buddy in high school. Probably one of the probably the most athletic kid at our high school. Uh, he used to, without fail, drink a two liter of Dr. Pepper yeah. before football games, every single yeah. football game. And he just smashed people. Yeah. Crushed it. And like, I remember we had a baseball tournament. He's also a savage at baseball and we're at a baseball tournament and he has a horrible game, terrible game. And he comes up to me after and he's like, it's cause I didn't drink Dr. Pepper. So we go to the store, he gets a two liter of Dr. Pepper smashes the two liter of Dr. Pepper Comes back, goes like four for five, like, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, making dude. diving catches in the outfield. A little sugar, yeah. He's just an absolute like. I, th I think it was a total mental thing, but whatever. Yeah. Just let him drink his Dr Pepper. Yeah, yeah. Cause you hear about a lot of NBA guys and people having whatever nutritional habits. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, I hear about MLB guys actually. Like, a lot of them are drunk when they're I'm playing. Sure. Have you heard that about NBA guys? No. Yeah. Uh, see, that's the, well, the different scene. You can't. You couldn't play. An the NBA rumor is game. Jordan. Yeah. Like that's the what? conspiracy is flu game that he was hung over. Really? Mm. That's the conspiracy. <laughs> what a conspiracy! Yeah. <laughs> There's a bunch of conspiracies about that poor guy. Well, shit. All right. So this. Is, let's go back to training a little bit. This is, we don't have to <laughs> talk about training. But it's funny. Have you ever seen videos of Jordan training? What, like lifting weights? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gloves on, fucking cut off, doing 20-pound dumbbell bodybuilding movements. Just bodybuilding. Yeah. Someone argued, I think someone argued Tim Grover, that's his coach, right? Yeah. In my child thing, not to whip this whole thing <laughs> around. Like, that, do you think Jordan and Tim Grover, like, cried or something? Have I'm you ever like, read his f- book? No, but I'm sure. That dude has no fucking idea what he's I, talking about. <laughs> like, he's obviously, he's <laughs> I mean, obviously he, like an he emotional had, leader. Not he, like a strength and conditioning oh, coach. You would cringe. Yeah. No, I hate all that. <laughs> and and he's got like his book killed it. Yeah. People love his fucking People book. People love it. And I read it and I was like, this guy sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I don't read any of that. All of it really does kind of piss me off. That's why you're not a champion. Uh, that's why I'm not doing fucking yeah, shit. I, I just don't <laughs> get it. Yeah, I just don't get it. Like that guy was the first strength and conditioning coach in basketball basically you know like yeah. obviously other guys were lifting weights but jordan made it cool yeah and, and, and so like you automatically think he's gonna be the best or know what he's doing yeah that's the same as all these celebrity trainers like the best trainers aren't training celebrities some may be yeah but most of them aren't it's whoever's popular whoever's got the cloud whoever's got the networking whoever sucked the most dick yeah lives you know? in la yeah whoever lives, lives in, in beverly hills that that that's probably a failed actor themselves and decided to do yeah. <laughs> six pack shortcuts instead. Yeah, yeah, that's real. what it is. It's crazy. And, and strength it, and conditioning is like fifty fifty now. It used to be worse. It used to just be like random ass meatheads, yeah. and now it's like fifty percent of folks kind of know what's going on. Fifty mm-hmm. percent of folks are still just old school dudes. Ninety percent of them are still unathletic. N- yeah, oh, none of them. <laughs> none of them were good athletes in damn cells. <laughs> uh, Some yeah. percentage of them are on steroids. Yeah, yeah get them out. <clears throat> Ram Ram's a decent athlete. Ram? Yeah, yeah, Ram's you moved around with Ram? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we played uh, back when Evan, you know Evan. Yeah. Back when Evan was here. Evan's a good athlete, too. Evan's a really good athlete. And they had Josh, I think. I don't know if he was an assistant. He's a good athlete, too. Josh, a freak athlete. Yeah. We played two on out. two. We were yeah. in, they snuck me into the Kings Arena, and it was a really <laughs> athletic strength conditioning team. We all played two on two. Yeah, we went after it. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, it was sick. Yeah. Good dudes. I love those dudes. Yeah, they're good. I know. I wish I saw Evan more. I haven't probably seen him since he met, left. I think he moved jobs. I think he's at Pitt now. Oh, yeah. Pit basketball. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty good resume, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Oregon and then Pitt. Yeah. Yeah. Kings, Oregon, Pitt. Pretty good. Yeah. And Jeez. I think Josh might have been Mississippi, Bama, um, something Southern Auburn. basketball. Auburn. Wait, that's he was there when they won it. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Sick. Pretty good. So lifting while you're, while you're training? Yeah. Three times a week. <laughs> and so this is my split. I'm going three times a week. Mondays and Fridays, arms. <laughs> <laughs> All arms. Just straight arms. Momentums. Yeah. The momentum. I mean, uh, no, like I was I was training first half of the year, still pretty hard, benching, like hit heavy rows, mm. uh, h- hitting upper body pretty hard. It does, okay, like I would, I would have talked shit about myself like a year ago. It is when you are training for like a purely endurance sport, a lot of it comes down to like how well your rib cage can move in order to like get more lung expansion. Mm. Um, and, and your big titties were getting in the way. What are you telling me? So like, w- if you are doing a ton of rows and a ton of bench pressing, where you're like depressing your scaps and squeezing your scaps down and back, you compress the, your T spine, and like you j- literally just can't breathe into the back of your rib cage. And like, if you watch, if you look at a like a cyclist, so. Obviously, they're in that position where they're hunched over, but they get so much like crazy expansion into their upper back, and that's a lot of just volume that your lungs can take on of yeah. oxygen and air. Mm. Versus if you look at a bodybuilder, they have a super flat T spine. It's because everything they're doing is yeah, compressing and, and flattening the the T spine. Let so, alone just like the energy and time. Yeah, like people exactly. say, like cardio doesn't affect your strength. And shout out my guy, I absolutely love him. But Nick Bear, yeah, uh, just posted something today saying like, oh, you know tagged a, a PubMed mm-hmm. um, article and I didn't even read her uh, but it said something well because he just ta- he didn't even tag it he just like <laughs> yeah. noted it yeah, he footnoted just it just the title yeah. yeah but it said you know like aerobic capacity and endurance training doesn't affect yeah. total strength and uh, 
uh, hypertrophy, yeah, which you is only like have so many hours in the week. It's just nuance, yeah. and you only have so many calories, and you yeah. o- your body can o- only recover so much Adaptive overnight. Energy, yeah, yeah. They, they, it, like yeah, it, like no, walking yeah. doesn't blunt the stimulus of hypertrophy. Yeah, but that's like that's all science can do. Yeah, science can't apply work. it. Yeah, the the application <laughs> of it is different. Yeah, um, yeah. So I would uh, train upper body two days a week, and I was still pulling and pushing, but I was doing more unilateral work, more rotational rowing, yeah. rotational pressing. And how you like program that. that matters too, right? If you're doing three heavy ass sets of fifteen on Bulgarian split squats, your legs will just be too sore to run tomorrow. Yeah, is that blunting any effect? No, but like, yeah. no, I have to run a, a six minute mile tomorrow. It's gonna fuck my shit up. Yeah, it's gonna fuck with my skill work. Yeah, my skill work is running at a six fifty pace. Right. Mm-hmm. So I would, and then I would. Like, you want to put your high-stimulus lifting days, at, like, with your high-stimulus running days, whereas yeah. people would think, like, I'm going to run on Monday, lift legs on Tuesday, run on Wednesday, lift legs. Oh, yeah, stack them up. Yeah, so I would, on Wednesday, after my hard tempo run, I would hit legs. And for me, like, it was really more maintenance, volume, and intensity than anything. Like, I'm, I definitely didn't get stronger, and yeah. I didn't get more jacked, but I'm... It's hard. But fuck you, I can run a 650 pace. <laughs> yeah, you're hauling ass. <laughs> you are hauling ass. Uh, well, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, it's dope. It. And uh, we'll be watching what you do uh, as this goes along in the next year and a half, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, and then to the Olympics. Right. Maybe. Exactly. <laughs> run right. I gotta to shave the a minute. <laughs> a minute off each mile. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Exactly. More. Fuck. What two minutes, maybe. Two. Yeah. Two minutes. That's oh, wild, Christ. right? Coming for that 450 pace. Dude, That's I couldn't even great. run an eight minute mile right now. There's no way. <laughs> you got the hokas. We can go we test the it. Hokas, dog. <laughs> but there's no way. Yeah. He's wearing them for style, not for speed. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, my boy John. <laughs> well, where can people find you? Uh, Coach Joe HTA on Instagram, Hyperthrive Athletics. Shit. Did you guys see Hyperthrive Texas opened up? No, I heard. No. Yeah. So Aaron, our oldest brother, moved out to Texas. His, uh, his wife's family's from out there. So they, they bought, or they didn't. They actually built a home out there, which is awesome. And now he's starting Hyper Thrive out in Texas. What city for those listening? Abilene, serving the community of Abilene, Texas. There you go. Nice. Anyone want some strength addition or some coaching? Check yeah, it out in Texas. Sick. Stoked for him. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening. New episodes every single Wednesday, Friday, 3SP.co. Join the Discord, 50%facts.com. And I'm Sal Mike, where you want me to find me? I am at DJ McD and all the social media. The show is 50% facts, where percent is a word and 50 is just numbers. 50% Facts is a Spreaker Prime podcast in association with iHeartMedia on the Obscure Celebrity Network. And uh, if you want to order some stuff from us and get it for Christmas, you better get that stuff in real soon. And we'll talk to you next time.